Hello, everyone. I'm Janet Salmons, Methods Guru for Sage Method Space, and I'm happy to be joined here today by David Bogle, who is editor in chief for California Management Review, and Professor Emeritus of the Haas School of Business and Department of Political Science. But before we get started with our conversation, uh, if you are new to methodspace.com, um, this is a blog community uh, hosted by Sage Publishing, and we're interested in all things to do with designing, conducting, uh, analyzing research, and then writing about it, sharing results in all different kinds of ways. And as you can see at the center of this Venn diagram, we have teaching and learning because we think that whether you are a student or an experienced researcher, we all have something to learn. So we hope you'll learn something new today. Um, so um, Dr. Vogel, I'd like to just ask you to start by um, telling us a little bit about um, the California Management Review and, and how, that, uh, how that works. Well, we're at the journal. We're published by the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley. Uh, we've been around since uh, 1958, so we're an old publication. Um, we have a very distinctive editorial niche. We're interested in articles which are research-based, but which also have insights into the practice of management. So we, mm -hmm. we evaluate an article. We want uh, work, work that's based on good, solid research, um, mm -hmm. but then also has a direct relevance to practice of management. We want to know if I'm a manager, what could I learn from reading this article? If I was a business student, um, might I use it? Might I learn something if it was assigned to me in the class? Right, right. So um, I think, you know, I've, I've been a fan of this publication for a long time because I've uh, really, uh, you know, welcomed the kinds of articles and the kinds of special issues and the ways that you focus this publication to be, um, you know, both, you know, research-based and uh, practical. And so, you know, I wondered if you could just, you know, talk a, a little bit more about that in terms of, you know, how you set up your uh, guidelines and your peer review, et cetera, to encourage that kind of uh, writing. Well, I mean, when we first get submissions, I look them over and many of these submissions are simply not appropriate. They're either too academic or too uh, consulting oriented. So we have a first screen where we see, you know, does this thing have some substance? And then we send it out for reviewers and we ask our reviewers explicitly, um, is the research solid? Does it, is it original? Mm -hmm. Is it important? And, say, and also we ask our reviewers to assess um, what, are its man, what is, is its managerial vocation, its managerial relevance. And our reviewers have become quite conscientious. And we look at reviews and they're very much aware that we expect both criteria to be uh, met uh, before they can recommend the submission of an article. But as a referee journal, we go through rounds. We often get a piece where uh, we send it back and we reviewers have suggestions. The person revises it once or twice. Um, sometimes the revisions work out, we're able to publish it. Other times they, they simply are unable to meet the expectations of our reviewers. But we're very, we're very proud and pleased to have um, large numbers of reviewers who understand the editorial mission and take mm -hmm. very seriously their responsibility to give advice to authors as to how to meet our standards. So, um, and, and I think, you know, really, I mean, the, the field of, of business and management, you know, has done a better job in, in terms of, you know, having this kind of high quality professional publication that you know, some of our method space readers who are in other disciplines, you know, may not be familiar with. So it's part of the reason that I wanted, to, you know, it's really delighted that you would, um, you know, share some of those insights with me. So, you know, in, in going through that review process, I mean, you know, are there um, particular kinds of, um, I don't know, uh, you know, ways of, of encouraging people who are accustomed to the sort of style of a scholarly article or even the style of a thesis or dissertation, which are obviously, you know, aimed at, 
you know, an audience that are other yeah. Right. academics or maybe it's just the people in your committee or yeah. you know whatever you know how do you uh no, that's you a, help, that's, what helps that those scholars to kind of make that that's leap? a real challenge and there are many academics i think that have a really hard time um translating their research into practical implications sometimes their research might have no practical implications it's very hard um and uh, most active, most business school professors, I think, are not able or interested in doing that. Um, the best advice we give people is to look at our journal and look at the pieces we publish, look at their style, look at how they approach, um, how they approach research, how they present information, uh, how, how accessible they are. Um, and uh, I, I would say, you know, again, I would say the best advice I would give to a prospective author is to look over the review, find articles that are in their subject area and see the kind of mm -hmm. um, accessibility and quality and style, very much important, the style of the articles that we feature in the review. I'm just going to, to uh, you know, quickly share the screen for the, the current issue. And, you know, so that, you know, people, and we will, you know, include a, li a link as well, but, you know, I think, you, you know, you've, in terms of just timeliness of, you know, so, you know, which is, I think, a challenge, one of the challenges for scholars, because research takes a long time to do, and whatever was going on when you started out was probably not, you know, what is going on now, you know, after the pandemic and everything. So, you know, being able to, um, uh, you know, to, to put forward, uh, you know, timely, you know, so it, I mean, to be useful, it needs to be, uh, to be timely. And, you know, I think that California Management Review has done, uh, you know, a really, you know, great job with that. So, you know, can you tell us anything about kind of what, what's the, you know, kind of thought process behind that, that, that allows you to move through the kind of really um, uh, uh, rigorous, process that you've described in terms of review, but at the same time to, you know, put out issues that, that are really, you know, of the moment. Well, I think we're fortunate that we generally have fairly short lead times. So from the time someone gets accepted to the times we're able to publish is fairly, fairly rapid. And also it's very important, thanks to SAGE, as we have SAGE first, and therefore um, this means that even before an article appears, in an issue, it's available online through the library mm -hmm. and to scholars. And that uh, enables very rapid dissemination mm -hmm. of, of, um, of research. So people no longer do people have to wait maybe six months, nine months, three mm -hmm. months for an article to appear in an issue, um, but relatively quickly, once it's accepted within a fairly few months, it becomes online. And then scholars mm -hmm. and people and people have access to the review can look at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really made a big difference, thanks to SAGE, in helping us to stay current. Right. So what, what advice would you have to scholars who may be watching this, who maybe are not in the business field, so this particular publication might uh, not be the one they would look for, but, you know, how might they either, you know, think about their work differently, their, their findings and their process, et cetera, their research work differently, or, you know, how might they find opportunities uh, to publish things that would reach the professionals and practitioners in there? Well, I think there are a number of, in, in, I know in political science and in sociology, history, psychology, there are a number of publications, which are, and even including economics, which are geared uh, mm -hmm. to a broader public. Um, and also, of course, with online publishing and with blogs, et cetera, um, the opportunities to have an insect and impact are very substantial. The other thing that we've done is we started a new platform called CMR Insights, which okay. are um, uh, shorter pieces, not peer reviewed, uh, very topical. Um, uh, they're not copyrighted, they're publicly accessible. They're available um, online relatively quickly. And so if you have ideas um, that you want to get out there, um, mm -hmm. the CMR Insights is a very useful way in which you can mm -hmm. do that. And that can happen very quickly. And we're pretty right. broad in terms of 
of the kinds of things that we publish as long as they have some managerial relevance. Right. So it, it sounds like, you know, for uh, people who may be listening to kind of branch out and look at, you know, kind of other publications that, you know, maybe are not the ones you read, you know, in your graduate course where you're only reading the top scholarly journals in your field and and then to, you know, look differently at, you know, what you found. And, you know, I think for, for some researchers, I, I do a lot of work with qualitative researchers where they may be thinking, oh, well, I can't generalize to, you know, make a, you know, a, a, a you know, decree that, you know, everyone, you know, could, should follow, you know, this particular finding, but, you know, to, to find some way of saying, well, you know, what about this, you know, either raises new questions or might be, you know, have some uh, implications for practice. And, uh, you know. Yeah, no, I think, I think those opportunities, thanks to the internet, have multiplied enormously. Um, there's lots of online sites, there's blogs, et cetera. I think that um, people, there's a lot, the opportunities to communicate with a broader audience um, have grown very, very substantially. People have Twitter accounts, et cetera. And so I think there are a lot of opportunities. Um, and there's also, of course, you know, newspapers and magazines, which are interested in broader, um, broader articles that appeal to a broader audience. And, and um, people, I think, often will have research that they can uh, present in those particular more public forums. So I think there are a lot of opportunities. I think the key is really to, um, uh, to be motivated to do that. And I think one of the problems um, in academia is that the, um, in most cases, the, the reward system is based on scholarly publications um, and doesn't really reward and recognize um, efforts to reach out to a broader audience. Um, I think that's unfortunate and that's a challenge that we face. Um, uh, because many, some schools do value uh, publication in CMR, but many business schools um, would not. They would consider it like a form of executive education or consulting. It's important, it's useful, but it's not the corner of the realm. Right. And that's, right. A, that's, I think, a real challenge that we face. Right, right. I think that's kind of part of the, you know, broader, <laughs> broader change we might hope for uh, in academia, but, yeah. you know, at the same time, you know, there are many people who are in situations where they're not in tenure track or, uh, you know, prof promotional um, or review systems that, you know, spell out specific types of publications and, and maybe have a little bit more flexibility. Right. Uh, but, you know, to me, it, it's part of kind of our social responsibility as uh, scholars to um, you know, get what we find, you know, out to, to people who can use it. So is there, is there anything else you would like to add? I mean, the best advice I would give to people and, and particularly is when you're looking, for, when you have something which you want to publish and, and submit, look at various publications um, and find the publications that are appropriate. We get a lot of submissions, for example, that are better for an economics journal the National Business Journal, Human Resources Journal. They're very, they're useful, but they're very specialized. Mm -hmm. So people have to, we really look for public, we look for research that has broader implications mm -hmm. and research which has narrow implications, but which could still be very well done and important. There are many other publications where people can produce that material. So I think people need to think carefully um, and look over journals and say, you know, which is the journal or journals that um, are most likely to be publishing work that is similar to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just think that too many authors um, waste time in submitting to journals for which it would be clearly inappropriate. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for uh, just sharing a little bit uh, more about your uh, work with uh, California Management Review and you know we'll link to uh, to the publication and uh, you know hopefully that will be uh, useful to our readers. So let me just say one other point, which is that we yes. once something gets submitted, we really make a hard effort to disseminate it beyond the academic community. So we produce a video, for example. Mm -hmm. um, of every, with every article, which is okay. very important and time consuming and expensive. 
and those are publicly accessible on YouTube. So that okay. gives broader dissemination. Um, and we have, you know, we use social media. So we put a lot of effort once something gets published in CMR mm -hmm. to um, to make make it as visible as possible to a broader right. audience beyond the academic community. Right. And that's that's very important to us. Yeah, I think that you know we have to use all different ways to to reach right. people today. And some people would prefer to watch a video than right or to listen to a podcast or to. Um, that's you know, right, right. We, you know, or or to just capture their attention on social media that will draw them in. They whereas they might not have gone directly to your site. So, uh, you know, right. I think yeah. for, and we for, need to we need to be responsive to those different kinds right. of learnings. Right. Well, thank you. I it's uh, great to have a chance to talk with you. Well, thank you for inviting me.